Welcome to Julie Whitney Scott Presents Let's Talk Theater, a Mind for God production sponsored event. Heard only on WGRN LP 94.1, the Green Renaissance Station. Let's Talk Theater. Well, I am just so happy and, and thrilled to finally get a chance to meet Mr. James Daly. He is, it's all been done, radio in central Ohio. And they have been doing a lot of really good things uh, for quite a while now, at least as far as I know. Uh, and I am just excited to learn more about Jim and what your program is. Talk about your theater company. And because I, I want to start off with that. Who, who is Jim Daly? And tell us. <laughs> What is it's all? How did you even think about before we get real deep into sure. <laughs> into it's all about radio? How did you start off? What made you decide at what age uh, that you decided? Just take us on a little short journey of Jim <laughs> Daly all the way to hey guys, it's radio time. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'd love to talk about the show. Um, yeah, my name is James Daly, as you said, but I, I've been writing under the pen name Jerome Wetzel for a long time. So that's what you'll find the show under, Jerome Wetzel. Uh, I started writing in about third grade in elementary school. I started writing little stories and chapter stories. And by the time I got to high school, college, I was writing novels, none of which sold any amount of copies or anything. Um, but I consider myself primarily a writer. So after a while of you know not selling any novels that i self-published and and doing little paid writing gigs but nothing of note i was trying to think of a new project i could use my writing skills for and there was a radio show out in los angeles california called thrilling adventure hour and they do a live state well they did they're, they're no longer around although they have done some special shows during the pandemic but they did a live monthly show of original content in the style of old-timey radio serials and then they record the shows and put them out on the podcast of the same name. They didn't record their first few years in operation, but they'd been recording a few years. Um, I was listening to a whole bunch of episodes and they had announced they were coming to an end after a 10 year run that they weren't gonna be doing it anymore. And I was sad because I really loved their show and I wanted to see more. And I started looking around for other similar shows and could not find anybody else doing what they do. Uh, the combination of live show and scripted comedy podcast. Um, so I said, well, I'm a writer. I'm looking for a new project. Why don't I create my own show in that style? Uh, their style is very old timey. Ours is more modern geeky, but in the format of the live stage show with podcast ongoing serial stories. So that was my inspiration. I spent quite a long time, like eight, eight, nine months mapping out the initial batch of stories and characters and casting from all over the place and putting together a troupe. Uh, and as you may have noticed by now, I wasn't trying to make a theater troupe. I was trying to make a radio show where people would read the words I wrote. Uh, and then kind of realized as we started that I'd accidentally created a theater troupe. And then we decided we might as well join the Columbus, Ohio theater community and get involved. Wow, that's really cool <laughs> that you did that. Cause you know, you know, I'm a writer too. And like you said, at some point, even if it doesn't sell <laughs> and if nobody else wants to read it, it doesn't matter. As writers, we write it and, and we have to write it. And I think it's very encouraging to other writers out there that may be listening uh, that, hey, you know what? I can take my writing and do something else with it. And, and I can generate other than you know, self-publishing, which costs a lot of money. <laughs> Not anymore. You Amazon know? lets you do it for free these days. Really? Well, see, I don't know about that. I'm low. <laughs> but I was, I was paying the money back in the day. So I, I know what you're talking about. I come from the era where it costs a lot of money yep. to self-publish paper books. Yeah. No, we like publish. you said now, you you don't you know you can which I haven't tried it yet. Uh, one of these days I may get up the nerves, but I'm so busy doing other stuff. It's like why would you put on something else on your head? 
But I really am interested in in that that genre, this new way. You, there was something you said, and I want you to talk a little bit more about this piece of it, of the transition of going from radio, mm-hmm. with your troupe, to on the stage. So how, talk to us about that process. And I, you know, we know what happened, you said it happened, but it was a process you know, to happen that way. It didn't just happen. You had to have the right chemistry and stuff going on. What, how did you happen to do that, to be such a success as you are with it? Thank you for calling it a success. We're trying. I don't, I don't know if we've achieved that yet, but we're trying. Uh, but yeah, from the beginning, I wanted to do it as a live show, a live theater show. Uh, I didn't think of it in theater terms necessarily, but I wanted to do it in front of an audience, which I guess by definition is theater. Um, so that from the very beginning we had planned to do a live monthly show in front of an audience and record it and then put on the podcast later and that's the thing since we've started scripted podcasts are booming there's tons of these scripted stories out there but i don't know anybody still that's doing it as a live show first and then recording it for podcasts so i think that makes us relatively unique but that's always part of my game plan for this show which does make it a little more challenging. Some of the uh, scripted podcasts that I record in studio sound a little more polished, a little more produced. Whereas our show with that live component, it, it has more of that, that uh, improv feel. I mean, there are definitely actors improv lines in the middle of it all the time. But when we do have a Foley artist, we do have sound effects, we do have music, we've got two composers, the right music for the show. Um, but if you know and we record the rehearsal so if something really blows up in the performance we've got that backup audio we can edit it for the podcast but for the most part yeah when you're listening to that podcast you're going to hear the audience react you're going to hear the energy of being in a room and doing it it straight through and we don't do a lot of over editing we'll cut where there's big pauses or something but pretty much what you hear on the podcast is what was on the stage which makes it kind of different and unique well, the reason I say you're a success is because you're doing it, Jim. The, you have to start somewhere. We all do. And because, um, you know, I can say, you know, I say the same thing when anybody says it to me, I'll be like, oh, I'm a success. I didn't, you know, I don't feel <laughs> that way. You, you know, because you, it's, and I think it might be, um, if, if we're looking at it, in money terms of of how much money we're mm-hmm. actually making uh, can we do this full time and and not have a job that type of you know yeah, success right <laughs> no but being able to just do it to get a troop of people to follow you which is one of i think the most enjoyable things about being a part of a theater you know the theater world is getting people who love what you love and will help you and do it, and knowing that you know we're not going to make a lot of money. We might not make any money. We might just be doing. We're doing this for free, okay? Sure. But we're we're doing it for the enjoyment of it because it's what we have to do. Talk to us about how that how you've been able to continue doing what you're doing, and it's it has this new COVID social distancing, all this mess that has taken away our live theater portion um, of theater. Has it changed you what you're doing in any way? Or is it a a plus that you were already doing, you know, the radio piece anyway, and we can just back up and do that? I mean, uh, I'll answer the first part of your question first because it's a be- it's a more enjoyable answer. Um, I've been able to keep doing it so long by the incredible talent and hard work of a group of people who have been with me for five and a half years every single month. Most of our original troupe that performed in the side room of a comic book store back in the summer of 2015 are still with the show performing regularly after five and a half years. To me, that that's incredible. Uh, I'm floored by the amount of work so many people put into it month after month. Um, We just in year five here 
has started to lose a few of the original troop members, as you'd expect to on any show like this. Um, and we lost our, this year we had to replace both our narrator and our Foley artist for the first time. They've both been with us for almost five years. Um, so that that's hard. And we've, we've rolled with the punches, but there are, so, I mean, these people, a lot of them, I didn't know them when we started this thing. And now they're my best friends, you know, just working together and getting to do this over and over. Um, the script we put out every month is 80 pages long and it's new every single month. I write the majority of it, but I've had some of the troop have contributed some stories and that's super helpful and it's thrilling to get to watch them. Some of them have stepped up and directed the show. I mentioned two of our actors compose music that I write the lyrics for. Um, we've got our technical director who handles the equipment. It, it's the work of a lot of different people having to come back month after month. And that's why it's been able to keep going. If, if the group I started with had not stuck with me, we wouldn't be where we are. So I'm extremely grateful for, to each and every one of them and all the work they put in and just consistently floored by the talent. And those that, there's different levels of talent as there are in any, any group. Um, some of them started out amazing, some of them less so, but the ones that are less so have grown so much as performers and getting to watch that has been such a privilege. Uh, to the point where now of the original troupe, I think they're all super talented. Um, it's just been, uh, I, I don't know. I can't say enough about the troupe. I, I, I love these people. Uh, in terms of the COVID question though, that that's a lot tougher. Um, we did our show in March because we do a show every single month and we did our live show in March uh, just a few days before Ohio shut down. We got in and on that Saturday, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, things started to shut down. So we slid in under the wire. And originally I had emailed the troop and said, I think we have to cancel April, May, maybe June. We'll see how long this virus takes to work through it. Remember when we thought it'd be gone by June? <laughs> so we, I had canceled the next few performances. Um, however, Thrilling Adventure Hour, which had been defunct for a few years, uh, within two weeks after that, put together a live streaming show and did it online. And it was the first time I got to see them live, which was incredible with their original cast. And I said, well, if they're doing this, I copied them once more. If they're doing this, why can't we do it? So I emailed everybody and said, hey, I, I released you from the April date, but is there any chance I could still have you for April? And every single one of them said yes. Um, so we moved straight to Zoom online streaming in April, didn't miss a beat, haven't missed a show. And we will be continuing at this point. We know we'll be continuing online through at least early 2021. We've canceled our 2020 live shows, which, which frankly stinks. It's not the same energy to get everybody in the room. Um, you don't get that socialization before and after. I mean, we, we try to do it on Zoom, but it's not the same. And I really miss the heck out of all these people. Uh, and I feel like the guest stars that have come in aren't getting the same experience because they don't get to be in the room with us. So we're still doing it. Everybody in their own homes, stream it live. We're now selling tickets again. We made it free for a few months, but we're selling tickets again. And, and life goes on. The stories continue. The show continues. And we hope very much to move back into the theater as soon as possible. We don't want to stay online. Yes, you know, the, the good news is the pandemic must and will end. Um, and also, I think the good news is, too, you know how we are. The show must go on. We have to figure out some way to do it. And I believe that at least here in Central Ohio and all of, you know, everywhere else, entertainers and, and are coming to, and figuring it out. What can we still do? But like you said, Jim, it's we miss the fellowship of being in the same room and, you know, touching and feeling, you know, the energy of, of one-on-one. So it's, it's important, like you said, to have people that are with you and you've had people been with you for this, you know, your whole period. So it's a blessing because you guys have been together so long that it helps you probably be able to get through this together as a team, you know? 80 pages every? Every month. Month. So, Five and you know, I know, I know what that, I know what that means. <laughs> that, that, that's like a two act, yeah. you know, a two act play 
with maybe four scenes, maybe in between, maybe eight scenes, two acts. Mm -hmm. That's a long, a lot of writing. It is. So how, you know, this, you said you do, you know, the majority of it. So does your team come together, you know, and do table writing or, or put that all together? Or are you just that creative, Jim, that you can sit down every month, I am all in all, and <laughs> you, you know, come up with an 80 page, not 80 page. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's usually four separate stories. Um, about 15 to 20 pages each and then little commercial breaks which are aren't real commercials they're scripted comedy as well in between uh, yeah uh, um nick argenbright has written probably 20 episodes for the show total which if you think about which sounds like a lot but think we've also done at this point 64 shows times four sketches so we're in the hundreds um uh, of scripts uh, and then I've got a couple other people that have written a couple each but I will say uh, our this is part of what I miss is at our after parties because we always hang out after the show and get a drink or two and me I don't even need a drink but just put me with that group I'm going to talk about what my ideas are what's coming up what I'm thinking and bounce ideas off of people and in the last couple of years we have formalized that process a bit where twice a year I'll have a story meeting that everybody's invited to, and not everybody comes, but everybody's invited to. And I'll run through what I'm thinking for the next six, eight, nine months of story. And they can give the feedback and shoot ideas. And occasionally somebody will be like, oh, I want to write that. Let me take a crack at that script. And I'm like, great, please. Because I'm not turning down help on in any front. Um, in fact, I, I love having other people write the episodes because I mean, like the talent in this group and they come up with ideas I could never come up with on my own. Um, so yeah, I could take some credit because I sit down and write most of it. And a lot of the big story twists and things are mine, but there's plenty of them that aren't. And some of the best jokes are improv bits from the cast. So yeah, it's not just me in a vacuum, even if I do do the lion's share of the keyboard writing. I think when you're doing... And I'm glad I asked you that question for anybody else that was out there listening, like, well, wait a minute, how did he do that? Because like I said, usually if somebody says, oh, it's an 80-page script, you're thinking, whoa, wait a minute, 2X, 4? No, it's not an 80-page continuous story. It's broke down in the short plays, which then comes out to uh, and also keeps you changed, you know, keeps, keeps it moving, stuff like that. Uh, not saying that a play doesn't, but just oh, saying yeah. that with this type of format, it's easier when you're moving from different things. Now, I want to ask you this. I had a, a, a troupe called the uh, Sunday Theater Troupe, and we were doing it, you know, coming up with, you know, writing short story, short plays, acting them out. One of the things uh, that I wanted and, and was not, was improv, but also knowing the, knowing the script, you know, knowing the basic, memorize this, yeah. and then improv, you know, because I feel if you, if you know the, the, the general script for real, if you, you know those words, it helps you, at least for me as an actor, I'm an actor too, you're an actor? Uh, I like acting. And I've been in a few shows last few years, but I've been in my show almost not at all. Okay. So for me, as because uh, sometimes I would also perform, you know, mm -hmm. in the skit. So for me as an actor and as a writer too, I'm always looking at the actor like, you know, it's important that you at least learn the lines. Uh, even if we're improv the show, because the main, if you don't do the, know the main lines, Sometimes the improv pieces just get completely lost on the audience because there's no premise and there's no storyline or, or you, you just, sure. so would you, do you agree <laughs> or, or not that it makes, and maybe that might be, I don't know if your actors do that or not, uh, but I think it helps the story when you have, especially when you're developing yeah. a, a format that, is including improv you know that's part of this is it's so 
part of that, of it. You have find, ha, any difficulties with that? Or were you always blessed to get, uh, get actors that understand that even though we're doing a lot of improv, you still need to memorize the script? I mean, I won't say there's never been any issues, but my cast doesn't have to memorize because we're doing the radio style. They do it with the script in their hand. So that, that help. I mean, trying to churn out 80 pages every month, that's a lot of memorization I'd be asking them for. You're, so when you do your live part that you videotape for your podcast, they're still reading. Yes. Yeah, we don't do sets or costumes. It's people in front of a microphone. Now, there is blocking when we're in theater. Like, they're assigned certain mics. And for story purposes, we have them where they would be if they were in a scene. Um, we have a line of mics so that we can have a bunch of people on stage at once. But the improv comes from the fact that I mentioned there were there were four stories per show most of the time. Occasionally, mm -hmm. we do some longer stuff. But uh, there are, like, nine series that we're doing. But we keep, currently, we've had a couple we've ended, but every month you're doing stories from known segments. Known, they're basically like sitcom episodes. Okay. So we have guest characters, but some of the characters have been in most of the last 66 shows. And these actors have really gotten to know these specific characters. Mm -hmm. And I won't say there wasn't any improv at the beginning, but the improv now comes from being informed of having played the same part for a long time and knowing how that character would act and developing that character. And I try to write to the performances. So the, the writing evolves based on the things they throw into the, the show. And yeah. I do encourage the improv to happen in rehearsal so we don't throw people off on stage. Um, but he, yeah, it, <laughs> certainly they have free reign because they're developing these characters and have ownership of these characters to do a little more than just read the words if they feel it, it's right. How now, right? At the, oh, what kind of venues? W when you are performing, do you have difficulty finding a stage? Do you use a stage? Do you what? What? Where do you go to do your performing when we were performing? You know, to do the live piece that you uh, videotape for your podcast. So we started out at Pack Rat Comics in Hilliard. They had a big empty side room. Uh, no stage of any type, fluorescent lights were all under the same, in the same folding chairs. And it was, it was a fine place to start those people, the owners of Pack Rat could not have been more gracious. But uh, just a few months in, we started packing that space. It only held about 30 people, um, 30 people audience wise. And the sixth month we did it, we were full. And there were people standing in the back. And it also felt like we're just under fluorescent lights in an empty room. We would like to be on a stage and have lights and, and things. So from there, we uh, moved to Mad Lab Theater for show number nine, way back in early 2016. And we had stayed there all the way through the pandemic. Um, however, we are looking for a new home for 2021. So if you're a theater in Columbus and you're looking for a show like ours, we are free agents that are, we were in the midst of trying to line up a new home when COVID hit. And so this has greatly hurt our efforts in that we've still got some l lines out, but nobody's going to commit to us right now. And we understand that. Uh, we have done a few special performances at the Columbus Arts Festival, at the Nest Theater, um, in, at the Short North Stage for the Podcast Festival. So we've done a few performances elsewhere, but Mad Lab has been our home for most of our run. Mm hmm yeah, it's right now, whenever we're all as theater companies, whenever anybody asks, so what's your plans? It's, we have to wait on what the governor tells us. Yes. <laughs> our, our plans are based on whatever <laughs> they're telling us at the, at the time. Mm -hmm. I always like for my guests to give words of encouragement to someone out there. Uh, and you can choose either, uh, I want you to think about the writer out there uh, or, the, or the person uh, who takes on something brand new and, and I say is a success because it's five years still in there, you know, uh, mm -hmm. tell, give some words of encouragement to that person out there that's sitting there watching this and thinking, dang, I don't know if I could do that. 
Sure you can. No, you absolutely can. Uh, what I tell people when they ask, like, how do you get started on a project like this? I think you've got to plan it. I think a lot of people, the instinct is to just write something and put it up as quickly as possible and get it out there as quickly as possible. And I get that instinct. But I feel like if you want something to be successful, you have to think through the logistics, you have to make a plan, and then you have to execute that plan and be willing to adapt that plan. Um, it, it's, not, it's something anybody can do. Just think about what your goals are um, and work towards those goals in a step-by-step -step manner rather than just run at them full speed and <laughs> hope for the best. We, when we started performing, I told the cast from the beginning that we weren't going to release the podcast until January. We started our show in July. So we're not releasing the podcast for January. We're going to do six live shows before anything's released on the podcast. Now we're releasing those early shows, but I wanted to build up that bank. So if there were technical issues, if we need to re-record things, if anything happened, we're not letting our podcast audience down. We still have consistent show coming at them. And by month two, the cast were all bugging the heck out of me of release this, release this, release. And I said, no, no, I told you from the beginning, we have a plan. We got to follow the plan. And uh, I don't think anybody regrets now that we waited. Um, but yeah, I, I think planning is an important component that a lot of creative people miss because you're just so excited about the art and you want to get it out there. And I'm sure it'll be great if you just rush it out there, but it'll be even better if you wait and follow through and think about it a little more. Jim, that's great advice. That is such excellent advice because I'm sure, especially now with the COVID and people are just at home and not f trying to figure out just what can I do? And they got all these things in their head. They're probably thinking about, oh, I just want to do this, that, and the other without really coming out with a, using this time that we have to come up with a good business plan, a plan, even though it's artists and we're, it's in the theater and we're artists, we still need a business plan. We need a plan. So that, that was some really good advice that you gave us. We can't possibly, possibly leave this show without you telling people how in the world do they get a chance to see these wonderful, wonderful productions and the podcast. Sure. Uh, it's All Been Done Radio Hour is the name of the show, both the live show and the podcast. So if you open up your podcast app and search It's All Been Done Radio Hour, you're going to find it. And you've got hundreds of episodes you can listen to. We do run a year ahead at this point. So everything's seasonally, seasonally appropriate. That, that's the thing. If you're coming to the live show, you've got a whole year of shows that aren't on the podcast feed yet. However, those are available as well. If you go to patreon.com slash IABD and become a donor for a mere $2 a month, you get access to that raw audio a couple of days after the performance. Uh, go to it's all been done radio hour.com and under see or hear us, there's live shows. There's a link to a ticket page and you can purchase a whole home pass. But, um, and we'll be live on the second Saturday of every month at 5 PM for the foreseeable future. That's really great. Jim. Yes. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to meet you, even if it's in Zoom land. <laughs> and I, I can't wait until I can actually meet you in public as one of your audience sitting in the seats of It's All Been Done Radio Hour. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.